Hi, I'm Deborah, and I am the owner and creator of Nefarin Party. I'm also the creative designer, the graphic artist, website manager, sales manager, marketer, customer service rep, and accountant. Sounds cool, but it can be really overwhelming at times. Today, I'm going to talk about mistakes I've made running my business, some do's and don'ts, and some tips on how you can succeed if you really want to. First, I'm going to talk about researching. If you're just getting into diaper cake making, you want to do your research. Look at many different diaper cakes. Look at diaper cake businesses and websites. Look at the styles, how to make the diaper cakes. You want to look for different places where you can sell your diaper cakes and products, whether it be your own site or a marketplace like Etsy or Amazon or eBay. You can always sell it on multiple. At one point, I was selling on all four. I was selling on my own site. I was selling on Etsy, Amazon, and eBay. But honestly, the majority of my income came from Etsy. You also want to make note of the prices that you see of the diaper cakes on the different styles. Now, your prices won't be the same because your costs won't be the same, but we will get into that later. I started making diaper cakes back in 2013, right after my daughter was born, Erin. I'm done birthing babies. I didn't like working for other people and I needed to find a way that I can make my own money and be home with my children. The problem was I didn't have a plan. I just did stuff with no real guidance other than reading a few articles. After you've done your research, you want to develop a budget that you can follow and stay within the lines because if you don't follow a budget, it's gonna be difficult for you to move up. I didn't follow a budget in the beginning and yes, it has halted me. If you're just starting out, a budget includes a list of everything that you will need. A budget is also a list of your monthly expenses. How much are you willing to spend per month? How much do you need to spend per month? And then you can work towards meeting that goal. List down all of your expenses. This includes everything that you need to make the diaper cakes or products, such as the diapers, the clothes, the embellishments and ribbon. How much do the rubber bands cost, the glue gun, the glue sticks, the scissors? You're going to want to write down all of these account for all of your costs depending on where you're going to be selling you want to find out how much it'll cost monthly if you're going to be selling on a standalone site you will most likely have a monthly cost then there are probably apps that you're going to want to add you want to research some of those apps and add those costs into your monthly budget if you're selling on a marketplace you I don't know, I don't think any of the marketplace at this moment has a monthly fee. They usually charge per product. Like if you sell an item, then you'll get charged for it or there will be like a small listing fee. You're also going to need packing supplies, your boxes, your packing paper, your tape, your label paper, your printer and your ink. You will need, you will need to figure out if you're going to do advertising, which I do recommend. If you're going to do advertising, how much are you willing to spend per month? You will need to develop a brand package. You can pay someone to do it for you or you can do it yourself. If you're tech savvy and you have some design skills, you can make your own brand package and you can change it as many times as you want. Then there's the legal aspect. You're going to need a way to keep track of your money because the government is going to want their cut. So you'll need a tracking software. You can do the bookkeeping and accounting yourself or you can hire someone to help you with that part. You should be able to do it by yourself until your sales start growing and the numbers start getting larger. You may need to register your business. You might want a trade name or a trademark. I won't go into too much detail with the legal because I'm not a lawyer. So don't quote me on some of this stuff and the rules might be different depending on what state you're in. Two of my biggest mistakes starting out was I did not have a budget and I did not have capital. Capital is money that you can use towards growing your business. So I was working part-time and what I was doing was using my money from my check or some credit cards to help fund my business. I also had a bad habit of purchasing recklessly. I would go to craft stores and I would see something that I like and I would have a coupon, coupon, and I would have a coupon and I would purchase things thinking, well, this is cute. I might be able to use this or I can make something real cute out of this. These two ribbons, these are just two of the ribbons that I think I purchased in my first year or maybe my second year. Mind you, I started in 2013. It is now 2021 and I have not used this. I don't think I use this one. I did wrap it around um, a piece of cardboard for storage, but yeah, I have not used these. I don't know what I'm going to use them for. I thought about selling it, but nobody's really going to want to purchase it. But yeah, I have a bunch of things that I have not used. I just don't have a reason to use it just yet. I do want to stress that this is not quick money. Don't quit your job just yet. It will take time to get to a point where you can live off of your business income and quit your job. So how do you price your products so you can make a profit? 
I'll be honest, pricing has never been my strong suit. I used to charge too low thinking people wouldn't pay so much money for this. So I try to go lower to make it more attractive. I was also trying to beat competitor prices. But honestly, have you seen, have you gone to a bakery and seen the prices of some of their cakes? They are pretty up there. And it's not just for the materials that they use. It's also because of the work that they put into it. Someone is working hard to make that creation for you. So when figuring out pricing for your diaper cake or your products, what I would suggest is take out a percentage of all of your expenses. You want to take a percentage of your cost of running business expenses, such as your website, your self-employment tax. You want to put some of that aside. You also want to add in the cost of the materials it took to make that product. You want to add factor in the package. How much did the box cost? The packing paper, how much did it cost for this particular product? And most importantly, you want to factor in your time. How you pay yourself depends on you. Do you want to charge a base price per item, such as you're going to charge $20 per large diaper cake or $10 per medium diaper cake. I'm just throwing these numbers on the air. I charge per percentage. So I would add up all my expenses, my cost of business plus materials. I would add that up. Then I would charge a percentage markup and that will be my profit. And that will be the total. When I add that profit in, the total will be the cost of that diaper cake or product. So what's really important is don't undervalue your business. Don't undervalue your product. Don't undervalue your time. If someone thinks that your product is too expensive, it's not for them. There are people that will value your product. They will value your work and they will pay for it. Now I have seen some extravagant prices out there, but there are people who purchase them. I might not be one of them. My, I have a range. I'm, I'm kind of on a cheaper side with everything that I buy, but that's just me. Everybody has their own price range. Everybody has what they're willing to pay for something. And remember, everything isn't for everybody. The next thing I want to talk about is branding. I feel like a business isn't official unless it's branded. That's just me. That might not be true. It's just how I feel. Branding is how the outside world sees and recognizes your business. Your brand includes your logo, your name, specific colors, marks, and specific font. All of these things in the brand package is how, is what will represent your brand. You can use the, like your logo and the font. You would use these items on your website, your social media, business cards, thank you cards, ads, and all that good stuff. Forgive me, I don't know the technical term, but a brand designer can work with you and help you create a solid brand package. Do your research and ask questions. An important question that I think, I never worked with a brand designer, I've seen some really good designers out there and I would have liked to. However, I did it myself because I was worried that if I didn't like what they put out, what would be the fee for them to change it? And I felt like I would probably keep having requests to change things. And I felt I didn't want to go through all of that. So I just ended up doing it myself. Now I did it myself. So as you can see, this is what I started out with. And then I changed it to this and then I changed it to this and then I changed it to this. And now it's finally at this. So I did it myself. So I didn't, only thing that cost me was time. Well, actually changing your brand as many times as I did is not beneficial to your business. It can cost you more than time, but I guess I didn't really, my business didn't drop when I changed it. I think it was still growing steadily. So I wouldn't say that changing it actually hurt my business, mainly because I was on Etsy. Most of my revenue came from Etsy and my site hadn't really taken off yet. So when I changed my brand, I changed the name. I changed the logo. First, it was Little Bundles Baby. Don't ask. Then it was Chic Baby Cakes. Then I changed it to CBC Party because I wasn't just I wasn't only doing diaper cakes anymore. I was doing a range of decorations and it wasn't just for baby showers. I was doing I started doing graduation, birthdays and weddings. There's not that many of it just yet but I have expanded into that because I would get requests for custom orders. So I might not be selling that on my site, but I would get a request to do something for a different type of event. And that's kind of how I started doing other events. Then finally, I changed it to Neferin Party. Neferin, me, it's a combination of my kids, Nevea, Philip, and Aaron. So I just put all their names together and I thought it was cute. That's, speaking of that, I don't, <laughs> I have this thing where I'm trying to be clever or catchy, but I'm trying to learn how to keep it simple. It's hard for me to keep it simple. And I think it's very important if you can keep your, your name recognizable and simple. 
chick baby cakes people were always calling it chick baby cakes and i mean i couldn't it was it was a weird name i don't know where i don't know how i got that either but i kept that one for the longest um the fair i changed it to the fair and party i think back in 2019 but yeah try to keep it simple rebranding is a pain in the butt because you have your logo everywhere your 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 brand name everywhere the website you have to find everywhere that you put it and change it and it can be time consuming and sometimes it doesn't even change if you're going to rebrand make sure it's because you've grown and your original brand and name no longer represents just that product so like like i said i were was me i was just doing diaper cakes and baby gifts originally then i rebranded into all party decorations you also want to take clear pictures of your product your product photos should be clean and neat free from background distraction this is what's going to pull customers in. Once you let them know about your business, once they see it, once you put it out there, your photos are what's gonna help draw them in. And if your photos are dark, they're kind of blurry, they're too small, it's not gonna be really attractive and the potential customer might go to the diaper cake right next to it and it might not be yours. You don't need special equipment to take your product photos. I've been using my iPhone and Android for years. This is all I really need. A few years ago, my husband got me this DSLR. I It doesn't like me very much, so it just sits here in the corner. I'm gonna put it back. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm pretty sure it's user error, but yeah, it stays there and I find it so much easier to use my, I have an Android now, I got rid of my iPhone, but it, it's so much easier to use my, my smartphone. Now you have to be prepared to market, whether it be search or social media ads, videos, social media posts or word of mouth, you have to get the word out there. People aren't just going to magically find your business. You have to let people know about your business and let them know what you have to offer. I started out on Etsy and I didn't have to do too much marketing because the traffic was already there. I also had a standalone site, but the mistake I made with that was I wasn't focusing on it. I was focusing all on Etsy because that's where my orders were coming from. So I wasn't focusing on my standalone site. It was there, just sitting there. I wasn't putting any ads into it. I wasn't doing email lists. I made some money from it, but like I said, it was kind of just sitting there. I'm ashamed to say that I was one of those people who did not like doing email lists. I had irrational fears like, what if I sent out all these emails and everyone unsubscribed, or I got reported and I wasn't able to send an email out ever again to anyone. Yeah, I feel like we can all benefit from some therapy. To be honest, that's where I'm at right now. I am working on building an email list and working on trying to figure out how to make it work for me. I think my biggest issue is trying to figure out what to actually put in the emails. So to sum it all up, follow a budget and keep track of your spending. Don't undervalue your product and don't undervalue yourself. And last but not least, it's okay to not be able to do everything yourself. And even if you can do everything yourself, it's okay to get help. You don't have to do it yourself. That is a hard lesson that I am still trying to learn. I hope these tips help you with your journey. Of course, there's more, and I feel like a lot of it is a learning process. You learn as you go. But if you have any questions about something I didn't cover, just let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.